You are watching XS LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the July 29th, 2024 special meeting of the Michigan City Historic Preservation Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order. Everyone have their agenda? Yes. Okay. Can we do the roll call, Larry? Okay, so even though we don't have a... Uh, we are going to go. Okay, good. Joyce Dalton? At present. Dan Granquist absent. Dwayne Hurt? Present. Lawrence Zimmer? Amy Bowman absent. Jonas Zimmerman absent. Okay, Joe. Joan is no longer on our board. So. Okay, so I can just take yeah. him off now. Yeah. Okay. Pat Patsy? Present. Anthony Hicks, absent. Greg Coulter, absent. Deb Purcell? Here. Uh, and, uh, Kyle Anthony Petter? Here. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Okay, and everyone have a chance to read their minutes? Any questions? Okay, then we'll just go ahead. And any correspondence? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we'll go with the uh, CFAs. Okay, um, when you go to, oh, I have it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. All right, so we're starting out with 2024-026. I think it moved, there we go. Um, for 502 East 9th Street. Um, this is one we had talked about in the past and then um, we moved it forward because we didn't have enough information and we weren't able to talk with the applicants. So Kyle and I went out and met with them in person, looked at the project. So what you're seeing in front of you is the same COA that we had several months ago, but in italics, I added the new things. So um, what they're looking at now is removing the previously built overhead structure, which you can see in the picture there. It's at the far um, left side of the house and they're talking removing that and building a new structure the same size same location according to the plans that they gave us and we sent those out to you so um, we looked at that we saw nothing wrong with with what they were proposing um, it is at the rear of the building it's visible from the street because the house is on a corner so that makes it more visible the existing structure will be removed. The floor is concrete. We checked that out. The new porch structure is different from the house, but it is compatible. So that's actually a good thing because it differentiates between the two and it doesn't give a false sense of history. The roofing shingles are going to match those currently on the house so it won't have the metal roof anymore. So the recommended motion is approval as submitted on the new plans. Okay, any questions? Okay. We move along then. And they are here, right? Are they? Yeah. yeah. Oops, Two ladies. Do you have any questions for us? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, there's a close, more close up picture. I forgot I had that. In the plans, which you all have. All right, so the next one is COA 2024-056. It's owned by Rick Decker at 211 West 10th Street. It's in the Washington Street Local and Haskell and Barker National Register Historic Districts, rated contributing a T-plan house built around 1894. The proposed project is replacing the front two second floor windows. So those are the ones above that large first floor window. Replacing those with Marvin Ultimate aluminum clad wood, two over two double hung windows. So if we look at this, 
there's an up close, more up close of the windows. One of the panes is gone, the upper sash is gone. So we've got those that are left. There's a historic photo of the house. So they have been one over one historically. And so that would be our major concern that they be the same type that they were original, same style. So historic photos show these windows as one over one. Marvin ultimate windows are on the approved replacement list when replacements are needed. So the motion is approval as submitted with the condition of window division to match the original. Any questions on that? I just wanted to comment. I think the owner of that house is extremely fortunate to have that photograph. Yes, <laughs> yes. If they ever wanted to do a really beautiful restoration, yeah. that would be your guide. Is, or, is anyone uh, here for that one? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just don't find them that good in the residential I mean, district. Clear, often. It's just amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. It'd be great to have it back. Yes. <laughs> so uh, am I to understand that we're just reviewing these, but we're not voting on anything, or what? We can vote on them, but we already had reviewed them once, but we could do that. We so. haven't reviewed these. Okay. No. All right, on the first one. I thought we were just waiting for Dan. Well. Okay. All right. Can we vote with less than quorum? Is that? Yes, we are going to. I think we should just go ahead. Yeah, we are. Okay, first one. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed? Okay, and we'll do the second one, which is the 211. Oh, that they clean if they want to. What? 11, oh, they can leave if they Yeah, if, after we vote, if you want to leave, you're welcome to leave. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Then we're talking about the 211 West 10th Street. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Okay. Somebody just come in or just left? Left. Just left. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, next is 907 Cedar for windows. We have two for 907 Cedar, but first we're just talking about the windows. So um, this is owned by Morris Orr. It, it's rated contributing, gable front house, built around 1902 in the Elston Grove Local and National Register Historic District. The proposed project is to remove seven existing wood windows and replace with new vinyl windows of the same size. So you can see this is the front elevation, that's the rear, a little hard to see for the tree. And there we've got whichever side that is, north or south, I don't remember, one side. And there's the other side, yeah. So that's sort of northish side. South. I know nothing like perfectly straight here in town. So those are the windows that they're looking at. Um, the findings of fact, the condition of the existing windows is unknown. We just have photos from the street. We were not able to get in and actually view the windows. Um, six of the seven windows that they want to replace are covered by storms, which should reduce deterioration of the existing windows. It, we just haven't seen them, so we don't. We can't say that 100 percent, but that's generally true. Uh, vinyl windows are not recommended and generally not approved in the historic district. So the recommended motion is denial of the vinyl windows, with a 30-day extension of the COA to determine the condition and ability to repair the existing windows. If found to be deteriorated beyond repair, replacement with windows from the pre-approved list above is recommended. Is anyone here representing? Yes. Um, actually, I do have a picture of one of the wood windows. You can see some of the deterioration on it. Um, I can bring this up to you. Yes. <coughs> Oops. You always overdo it. Looks like peeling paint for sure. But some of the wood is missing off of it. Is that what's going on on the side? Yeah, it's like a chunk is missing. Yeah. Mm hmm So it, you know, it's possible. That's one window out of Kyle's. Let's see that for sure. The, uh, the other windows, like you said, were covered up with uh, 
the storm and I, I haven't personally visited the property. Is that the one that's not covered with the storm? You didn't take yeah. a storm no, off for that one? Okay. Wasn't covered. Okay. Hmm. It's interesting. I'm not sure what happened to that, but yeah. Uh, so. I mean, there's, these, these pictures aren't the best. Uh, this is another one from the other side. It's getting into a hard to the condition yeah. beneath the soil. I mean, if, uh, if necessary, we can bring, uh, we can get more pictures to bring them in better for the review. So yeah. Be a problem. Good photos of the, especially the interior and what they look like under the storms would, would be helpful. Um, to prove that. The guidelines ask for the windows to be more than 50% deteriorated before re replacements recommended, and that doesn't count the glass, but the glass looked pretty good in all of these, so just talking about the frame itself. So yeah, photos would be good because it's hard to tell under the storm. Would we want to look at having uh, one of maybe someone from our list? Look at maybe them, them. yeah. And we could have somebody come. We have a list of people that repair wood windows, so you know that's something that we could we could share that list, and somebody could come and look at them and say yes or no. That's we've had that on other houses, which is really helpful. So now you're getting a 30-day extension. So before we get to the 30 days, you'll have to make arrangements with Kyle or. Uh, them to get over to look at them okay. or present um, photographs. Uh, um, would, uh, would I be able to submit them by email? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Do you need a, his his email? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. If you do that, that would be very helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you. And if, you if you want to stay, you can, and if not, well, probably uh, yeah. No, he's got he's just software. for the windows. Yeah, this is the window one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Wait. Wait a minute. Sure. We have yeah. a second one. For no, you. it's for, oh, it's for it's siding. Okay, okay. It's the window guy. <laughs> okay, you're just the window. <laughs> yeah. What? You're the siding too. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, then, then you better stay. Yeah. I didn't know that was. <laughs> yeah, that's. Next one up. Okay. Is that what the? Uh, I have a contract with Morris for Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. I must be thinking of a different one. <laughs> okay. Because I thought that looks like the site I am expecting to see. <laughs> so, okay. I wasn't sure. We've got so many COAs. I'm not sure what we're doing anymore. All right. So the next one is COA 2024-062. Do we oh. need to do a motion? Oh, yes. Well, he's I'm got sorry. an extension. So. You, you do need to do a motion on that. Yeah. You need to vote on the Make extension. a motion to uh, decline with an extension, right? Or, All right. Or just an extension. A second. 30 day extension. Thank you. I have a, um, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Thank you. Okay. Now we will go to 2024-062, same property, same address. Um, this is our next construction. And this time we're looking at replacing the aluminum siding that's currently on the house with double seven inch crane board insulated vinyl siding in regatta, which is a medium blue color. Is that the color you have? Okay, that color. So the findings of fact on this, the aluminum siding that's currently there has hail damage. When additional siding has been put on a house and been damaged, the next thing the guidelines um, ask for is going back to what's the original siding. So if there is wood siding underneath, obviously the aluminum siding has to come off before new siding can come on. So the original siding being repaired and retained would be the ultimate goal if that's possible. Sometimes too many changes have occurred, things happen, but that should at least be reviewed as an option. Um, vinyl siding is not recommended and generally not approved in the historic district. I will say in defense of this siding, it does have um, okay. insulation attached to it and so it's much more rigid than your typical Siding. Does it ever come in a narrower profile at all? Uh, it comes in a, you know, you can get it in board and batten, uh, four inch, five inch, and then this is the seven inch. Mm -hmm. So this would be the same reveal that he has existing. Um, the house got beat up really, really bad. Yeah. So like from, uh, 
insurance standpoint, our company always, because the aluminum siding that's out there is really hard to find. Yes. It's also really hard to find people that can install it successfully. So uh, from an insurance standpoint, when they pay to remove uh, aluminum siding, there's a fiber board behind it. So that we go back always with crane board and non-historical mm -hmm. areas. Um, there's a lot of aluminum siding in historical. That's why I came because I kind of you know there's right. probably going to be a lot more of this going on. Um, I just know that around uh, his house there's a lot of vinyl sided houses, um, and typically if he were to upgrade into something outside of aluminum or what insurance paid to replace, it would generally be way unaffordable like if it were right. like a party board or uh, LP so this is the comparable to what insurance paid to replace and it's a very durable much I mean it's almost impact resistant fade resistant so in the same in the same uh, reveal right it is compared to what's what's there now but what our guidelines really enforce what's under what's there now right. so so what the guidelines would recommend is actually removing the aluminum and whatever's underneath it I don't know what's under there for certain and seeing what the original wood siding looks like what its condition is and then making a decision after we've seen that okay. um, that would be the recommendation and just so. as a point of design, on a house that small, us and typically older houses had the smaller reveal. Right. So if it's not a cost difference, it would be our preference to go with. If you had to replace it, go with the smaller reveal. The smaller, the foot, yeah, the, four the narrower, okay. the closer to the original wood, sure. yeah. the better. The better it would be. So it would just look nicer overall. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. The recommendation then for the motion is denial of the vinyl siding with the 30-day extension to remove the aluminum, determine the condition and ability to repair the wood siding under the aluminum. If it's found to be deteriorated beyond repair, then replacement with siding from the pre-approved list is recommended. Is there any questions? Can I have a motion, please? So you're recommending we approve this? That's recommending that we wait, wait and see until. what's under there. Remove the aluminum and okay. whatever's behind the aluminum to get down to the original wood okay. and then see okay. what we've got to work with there. A 30 so days. And then come back in 30 days and 30 see days. Okay. where we are. Okay, a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Thank you. And if you get that taken off, if you get a hold of Kyle and let him know, we'd like to come out and take a peek. Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> That'd be great. This house is just right behind this building. So. Yep. <laughs> We'd be glad to make a trip. Well, I'm the one who makes a trip. He lives here. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to come and see it. And, and that would help us make a recommendation for next month. All okay. Right. I'll set it up. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, the next one, 2024-064, is for 613 Washington Street in the Washington Street Local on Haskell and Barker National Register District. The building is rated non-contributing, um, built 1894 to 1965. That's the actual house that is now a funeral home. The garage, oh, when did we say that was done? I'm not even seeing it on here, but it came later. But I either somewhere between 1929 and 1936. We looked there it up on Sanborn there. maps, there right? There. Yeah, so it goes back there a little ways, but is rated non-contributing. So the proposed project is to change the garage roof from flat to pitched, and there was a drawing with the COA application, so hopefully you got to see that. They've been having a lot of problem problems with leakage and. Uh, just can't seem to get ahead of it with a flat roof. So the finding of facts, the garage is not original to the property. Oh, here it is. It shows up on Sanborn maps circa 1929. The property has been significantly altered, resulting in the non-contributing rating. The garage is at the rear of the property, not visible from front, but visible from the side and alley. The flat roof was replaced in 2018, so six years ago and is significantly deteriorated and leaking already. So the motion is approval as submitted. Do you have any photographs? 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yes, so there's the front, obviously flat. The side, so that's what you'd see from mm -hmm. whatever that's street. Alan. Alan. Yes. Yeah, Alan. So mm -hmm. that would be from 6th Street. Mm -hmm. And then the other side. So it's, you know, it will definitely change the appearance and yet it's a garage and it's in the back and it's not contributing. It's not the main structure. And I'm not seeing how they're going to get ahead of this leaking roof. Mm -hmm. If the last one didn't last <laughs> six years, that's ridiculous. And actually a gabled roof is going to be more compatible with the existing house. It really so, is. So Yeah. I'm not sure why they did this in the first place. but And you're here representing? Yes. Okay. Any questions for us? No, thank you. All right. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And you can stay if you want, or you can find something different to do. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, the next application is COA 2024-065, excuse me, 601 East 10th Street. It's rated contributing a gable L constructed around 1890. So this is the front view from 10th Street, but we're talking about demolition of the three foot by three foot side porch, which is on the side street here. The porch structure is deteriorated and has become a safety hazard for the people around it. So, finding a fact, the historic Sanborn insurance maps do not show that this is an original porch of the home. The porch has already been removed, so this is retroactive approval that we're asking for. Removal of the porch does not alter the char historic character of the house. However, the door that's there on the side um, should be retained and secured in place. Doesn't need to be usable necessarily, but that does tell part of the story of the house. So the recommendation is approval as submitted with condition that the door beneath the previous porch is retained. So, I'm sorry. Yes. I, you. So I need to leave the door and there is no porch? But just Maybe screw it shut. That's fine. There, there is a plan I already talked to a contractor to submit for uh, for an site on that. It that will be vinyl, of course, after the approval. And the plan is uh, this door already sealed from inside because for safety reason. Mm -hmm. And the plan is just to seal it from outside and make it all of it sealed completely with siding. We would not normally recommend that. Even though a door isn't used, we like to see it there if it was originally part of the house, which that door underneath looks pretty old. So I'm not sure what it what was there at one time. I honestly don't know. I Sorry, what, what do you mean the door underneath? Underneath the storm? Well, door? under the porch that was there, yeah, yes, and under the storm door. Under the storm door, under the storm door. door. yeah. Under the storm oh, door. I see. Okay. The original door. The original the door. door. The storm door doesn't need to stay, but the original door oh, underneath there. It? Yeah. Need to stay. Yeah. And we'll review the siding next month. Mm -hmm. I mean, as in that, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to argue. Mm -hmm. that, that will look weird, like a door and nothing. A door and no steps, you do unfortunately see that many times. <laughs> it's just people change things over time, but getting rid of a door. It's kind of difficult to feather. You can. You can work this, the siding in and make it look like it wasn't there, but it's been there for quite a while from the looks of the door that's there. It looks like an older door. Um, I can't say if it's original, but it's definitely old. Um, if you did something with landscaping underneath, that could make it look like it's less like it's floating in the air and yeah. more like it's anchored somehow to the ground like a you know bush or a hedge or something going along where the green is there now okay. where the red is but i agree with that i think the door should stay and even if you don't see it on the inside we want to see it on the outside 
is because it's part of the historic house. I can get rid of the storm door, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it's definitely it's not historic. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to ultimately look nicer than if you just walled over it on the yeah. outside. Okay, well, that's the decision. But they need to vote. That's just a discussion um, so far. Do we have a motion? I move to approve uh, with the condition that the door stays. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. second you. All right, next one, 2024-066. This is 614 East 10th Street in the Elston Grove Local and National Register Historic District. Oh, there's a close-up of the door. I'm sorry, oh. but you can see it's a <laughs> four-panel door under that storm door. So it's been there for a while. Now we're on to 614 East 10th Street. So it's rated contributing, gable front, built around 1895. Description of the proposed project is replacing the aluminum siding with Royal Haven insulated vinyl siding, woodland vinyl siding, and board and batten vinyl siding. So the staff recommendation, finding a fact, aluminum siding has hail damage. The wood siding beneath the aluminum siding should be repaired and retained if possible. Vinyl siding is not recommended and generally not approved in the historic district. So the motion is denial of the vinyl siding with a 30-day extension of the COA to remove the aluminum siding and determine the condition and ability to repair the wood siding under the aluminum. If found to be deteriorated beyond repair, replacement with siding from the pre-approval list is recommended. Is there anybody here representing? 614 East 10th. Okay, do we have a motion? I move to approve for Deb's recommendation. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay, thank you. Let me just ask again, and I'm sure Kyle will, that when we send him a letter about that, that we ask that he get a hold of us mm -hmm. to view it. So, you know, have fun look at wood siding this yeah, way. You are. Okay. Next one is 2024. Well, here's pictures of this house, by the way. So, just a couple, but it's typical eight inch aluminum. We did reach up underneath the aluminum siding. We can feel the wood under there. I mean, it is extremely rare that anyone removes the wood siding before they put anything over it. That's just unheard of. So we know there's some there. We just don't know how messed up it might be. So, so this is 623 Pine Street. This is um, in the Franklin Street Local and National Register Districts. It's rated contributing an American Foursquare house with a garage behind it, um, 1908. So the proposed project, two parts here, is to replace the asphalt roof shingles and diamond-shaped asbestos shingles. The house has the asphalt roof shingles and the garage has these diamond-shaped asbestos shingles. And they want to re roof everything with Timberline HDZ architectural asphalt shingles. So the finding of fact, the proposed house roof is a replacement in kind and can be approved by staff. The proposed garage roof would be a change in materials, so that's why it's in front of you. If it was just the house, that could have been staff approved. That was just like for like. But this is very different. I don't know if you can see the picture very well, but these are very different. They were common back in the day, but not so much anymore. Um, so we're looking at a change in materials. The guidelines say that roofing has to be more than 50% deteriorated to replace when you're looking at something like slate, tile, metal, asbestos materials. They want to see it more than 50% deteriorated. Um, 
repair and alternate material replacements for the damaged garage roof shingles should be explored. So there's obviously no one makes asbestos roofing shingles. At one time they were made by Global Products in Whiting, Indiana. And uh, for some reason they went bankrupt. <laughs> asbestos, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. Tends to do it to you. It, it does, it <laughs> does. <Surgeons. laughs> yes, a funny little thing like that. So it keeps those attorneys in business, you yeah. know, that you hear on TV. So um, we did look at this garage roof. There's, this is a view from the rear, or no, side, south side, south side. So on this side we could see well, there's a lot of vegetation. That's the front. Yeah. That the front? No, that's no, the back side. Back side. That's the opposite side there. Those two sides, we really couldn't see much of anything damaged. That's the front. That's the front. Yeah, so really hard to see. Again, there's a lot of tree branches hanging over the garage. It's a really cute little garage. If you look on the house, there's it's a four square and there's an attic dormer on the sides. And then the side walls are that same asbestos material on the side walls, which is just really cool. So here's some up close of the shingles. And on the side, this is the south side. You can see that one there that's broken. There, up towards the top, there's one that's broken. And there was a third one, which I'm not sure where it was. We saw three on this side. Are and these those like rigid tiles that are kind of like cementitious? They're kind of like, like they don't have, one way you can always tell them is they don't have the little granules on them that asphalt shingles have. So sometimes they're rectangular. Diamond was the popular shape. Mm -hmm. um, back in the early 20s, around in there. So I think the idea was cheaper than slates, but still last a long time. It, they're still there, so for the most part intact. Um, I think I sent everybody some information from the state of Indiana from a few years back uh, today where they were just recommending on asphalt shing or asbestos shingles that unless they're really, really deteriorated, leave them alone. Um, if they do have to be replaced, then you're required to hire a licensed asbestos removal contractor to do that work in the state of Indiana, well actually anywhere. Yeah. Um, a homeowner doesn't fall under those rules if they remove them themselves, but then there's the disposal issue, which makes it very, very difficult. So fixing it is probably the more reasonable solution. It would have to be done carefully, but I think um, there's specialty roofing contractors that would be able to go in and especially a slate um, tile could be made that would be very similar in insert. You'd have to be very careful that you not just walk heavily all over these or you're going to have a mess. Um, and then that's when your problem happens, when the tiles break. Asbestos isn't a problem if it's not broken, but that would happen. Um, so I think exploring, talking to a slate tile roofing contractor and seeing about the possibility of replacing some individual tiles might be the most cost effective and the most environmentally friendly thing as well as looking correct. Yes. Those, yeah. they're very deteriorate. We're, we live at that property address, we've owned that house for 30 years and I can tell it Okay. You can see the sky from really? the shingles. It, it's very deteriorating, and I. There's a lot of them that are cracked. Yeah. You just it's, can't see it. And we don't do anything with it because we don't want to disturb the asbestos. Right. So we don't want to be up there cleaning the. Right. But there's a. They seem to like a shrinkage, so that we're getting, hmm. like say that, that and lifting. So and now there's, it's raining in now with the hail damage and the things that have went on. It's it's leaking inside the garage now, and it's just. Is your contractor a licensed asbestos removal contractor? I don't know. We're going with. With Al Al Alamo. Alamo. And they said they were going to get they somebody to do it. I, okay. They know what it is because they submitted yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So we don't know what what they do. With yeah. Who is the contractor? Alamo, oh. Alamo. Uh, I don't think they are themselves, at least I typed their name in the state okay. website right. to check on it and they weren't, but you know, they hopefully they get somebody in that would yeah. know how to yeah. deal with that. So, well anyway, 
before having that conversation, <laughs> my <laughs> approval was, uh, or my motion, recommended a mo motion is approval of the house roof replacement with architectural asphalt shingles and denial of the garage roof replacement and exploring the possibility of repair um, and that we could provide a list of roofing contractors that might be able to weigh in with repair possibilities. Um, also recommending that the vegetation be trimmed back to further protect the roof and structure because it was there were branches on the roof so. Would there be other ways in terms of like if if it was determined that the that the, sh that the roof couldn't be salvaged to somehow keep that design so then we have a way of keeping the, the yeah. appearance because I think I mean, there's probably a, Asphalt shingles or some other shingles that probably have a sheriff goslin shingles look a lot like that mm -hmm. the diamond Does are diamond asphalt? There's a metal Counterpart for this that's phenomenal if it was a house. I would absolutely mm -hmm. recommend that I'm not sure it's probably worth it for a garage, but uh, sheriff goslin Shingles look very much like this design in fact until we got to looking at it closely. That's what I thought they had um, but they're a Diamond, what are they call Diamond Lock or something like that. It's a company out of South Bend. There's other companies that do it too. They're just the one I'm most familiar with. But that would keep the look that's there now. That's true. Mm -hmm. what, what's the name of the company? Sheriff Goslin, G O S L. I've seen that on TV. Or E N, I'm not sure which, yeah. Okay. In South Bend. Okay. Art, art Lock Shingles, that's what they are. Art Lock. A R T dash L O C, I think. Okay. And they look very, very similar. Any other questions? So, did you your recommendation? Well, I have. It sounds like they're in bad shape, and if that's the case, then I would say I would recommend exploring. An asphalt shingle that would keep that look because it's a very unique look and it's replicated on the house so having the two things tie together I think would be really nice and see if that's a possibility I don't know no, much about sure. that company but but now if you want with the steel is that kind of period though I mean the metal roofing that I saw that looks like this is phenomenal I mean yeah, it I looks like the same thing but I don't know cost-wise what you're looking at but if you if you want to explore that I think that would be oh. terrific um, does it have like a texture the metal has a texture to it they have they do it in this design I don't know if I kept that picture up Let me look I was exploring I this last metal, night they think of like a smooth surface yeah this is this is not this is there is an asphalt shingle that is comparable to that. Yes, right. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. And that would be okay. Yes, I think that would because it gives that look. Okay. On the mouse. Especially if it had like a shadow line edge, okay. which even highlights the diamond pattern even more. But well, they typically don't have that shadow. It's just they it ends up curling up and they're peeling yeah. up. Right. So we've got mold. Right. No, I'm saying the new ones. The, if the new diamond pattern has the shadow edge, it would help highlight the diamond pattern and look like it's... We just wanted it to match. You yes. know, yeah. The house and the garage mats, right. yes. it would all fall right. in line together. That's right. what we were showing. And what's on the house? Asphalt. Asphalt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is, is there room for any public comment on this, or do we have to be silent? Uh, no, 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 if you have a yeah. comment. Uh, Scott Mellinger in Kenwood Place. I understand the goals of a historic area. Um, is economic efficiency ever looked at as part of this? We don't consider the cost, no. That's not that's our... That's not our job. Under our purview. Well, well, whose job is it? Yeah. It'd be the owner. The owner. I mean, well, we can well, present... Yeah. Well, we we're not, <laughs> I'm not here to have an argument about it, but yeah. just saying that we try to work with the owners up front to come up with something that comes as close as we can to meeting the guidelines and still being affordable. Well, then you, then affordability is part of it. There. Yeah. 
asphalt shingles. Asbestos shingles haven't been made since at least 1972. If you were here in the beginning, right. we did talk about that. Okay, I, I, miss, I wrote down 6.30. I oh, apologize. I'm at the here on time. That's okay. Um, so these are at least 50 years old, and by oh, the yeah. looks of them older. It's a garage. It's not visible from the street through the vegetation. They're re-roofing their house in architectural shingles. An overall better look would probably be a consistent roof on the garage and the house done simultaneously, in uh, my opinion. Are you doing your house also? Yes. yes. Oh yes. yeah, the house yeah. and the garage. Right. Right. Which already has, well, has the, the house already has already has already asphalt, has asphalt shingles. Yeah, yeah. They I'm sorry. Oh. Economics have to be part of this. It can't be an unrealistic, you know, this is not a particularly historic house, I don't believe. It's an historic district. Yes, it is. They're not putting plain shingles on it. They're putting architectural shingles mm -hmm. on it. They clearly are committed carrying owners. Mm -hmm. so okay, so let's move on. This is <coughs> the metal roof. Oh, okay. it's unbelievable. Oh, you might want to. So if just want to look at this. You can. Just showing you what it looks like. I am not asking you to put yeah. this on, but this it's is, just you know this is um, paid for by the insurance company too. You have to go by their guys. Right. So yeah, I understand that. So just yes, showing very you nice. what it yes, could be beautiful. done. And if it was the house, mm -hmm. I would say right. Explore right. this. Do that. Because yeah. Because that would it's be beautiful. Well yeah. worth it. it. But yeah. Yeah. And, um, break down the website just so you yeah. have it. I have a pen here if you have some paper. Thank you. It's going to be a pen. Nice. For garage. For garage. Okay. All right. So this is it's Eco Smart. E C O S M A R T okay. I N C okay. dot com. Okay. Okay. That's where they are. They're castle top metal shingles. Okay. Castle and I only know about how they look. I didn't research okay. anything more. I just thought okay. that's too pretty to be affordable, probably. Right. For a garage, I'm not right. going to fight over that. Yeah. But See, if for something like that, I don't know that the insurance company would have it. I can't yeah. imagine. Might, yeah. Because it's not even what was there. I mean, right. You obviously right. can't replace what was there. Right. Sometimes, right. if you can't, right. you can argue that. But right. Yeah. I doubt it, but it's still yeah. a, a good piece of information. If you ever need it, yes. like on the sides of the house, on those dormers, right. that right. might be something that in a small yes. amount, it yes. might be worth it. Yeah. So we said that the house has already been mm -hmm. done, right? The house has already yeah. been approved. Already been, it well, already it had asphalt yeah. shingles right. on it. So yes. it, it hasn't been approved. But the garage did not have asphalt no. shingles. No, no. no. It we're did. recommending that they stay with the giant and shit because that's what was If that's possible. Yeah. possible. Just like him to explore that. I, okay. I don't know what, what you're looking at there, but if if you look into the Sheriff Goslin, they are shaped mm -hmm. that way, mm -hmm. and I know they're on a lot of houses, and I, I know nothing about cost, but okay. I think it would be worth looking into and try to maintain that look. Uh, but the asphalt shingles on the house, it already has asphalt shingles, so replacing with the same thing is replacement in kind so right. that's that can be staff approved mm -hmm. yeah okay do we have a motion um i just have to remember now what we're doing <laughs> so we're going to we are um, approving this is for the garage only yes. Yes. We, yes well you can approve i don't know if you already approved you no, haven't I, so because it was all on one it story. was all on okay. one coa so you need to approve or for the house we recommend you approve the house yes. replacement in kind and yes. then the garage okay if you want to give them time to look for something else or i don't know how you want to do that exactly Break, can we break the garage out yeah. from the house? You can break the two apart. So it's in the part A, let's say we're approving the house, and then part B, we'll give them a 30 day extension mm -hmm. for the garage. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. By the way, I've got a text from Dan. He said, no, I cannot attend. 
I sent Joyce an email that some matters came up this afternoon. He did. Sorry. <laughs> so, anyway. Right. Okay. Just so we know for right. the record, he's not coming. Okay. This guy's going to be Well, we don't have to allow public comment at all. We so would they, I think okay. they're having trouble with the especially for yeah. their insurance? Yeah. Well, well insurance is going to have to pay for remediation, yeah, right. so, and that's, they have to, they don't have a choice, okay. they have to pay for that, so, yeah. And does the, Kyle, does the city monitor whether they're using a certified contractor for that removal? <laughs> you have a permit for that? Well, uh, I mean, you would need a... Uh, the, I mean, it would just be a sta it would be a standard roof siding windows permit. Um, typically, we I mean, we only have two inspectors, so trying to no, I keep everyone. But how do we how do we know that some Joe Blow roof contractor is not going to go and start ripping all those asphalt shingles off? Mm -hmm. I mean, asbestos shingles off. And um, endangering workers and um, homeowners and neighbors and I mean, how do we protect life safety in this situation? I mean, it's the same issue that we deal with with lead paint and other, um, mm -hmm. you know, asbestos tiles. Um, you know, sometimes I mean, if it's not in, the, I mean, I'm sure stuff like that happens in the historic district all the time. Um, yeah. That they discover and they just rip it off, put a hammer through it, and then the dust. Or whatever, yeah. you know, without wearing a mask or whatever, yeah. get some people's lungs, neighbors. I children. think also, didn't they say that the uh, company doesn't do it, but they have someone else that does right. it? That's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm hoping that's that's, right. yeah. that was the right. reason behind yeah. it, that so, they know that they can't handle that asbestos, and so they're getting somebody yeah. else to do it right. for them. So I think the Hopefully onus falls to you as the homeowner. You have to monitor that and make sure that whoever is doing that demolition of that roof is a certified asbestos removal contractor okay. so that they follow the correct protocols for mm -hmm. protecting their workers, that it's disposed of properly and all of that. And right. you. And protecting you. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you don't want that let, falling into the dirt of your garden and your yard because right. yeah. then you're going to stir it up when you're out there working or your kids are playing or whatever. So. Yeah. Scary. <clears throat> okay, do you have any other questions for us? Okay. Oh. <laughs> all right. The next one is 2024-073. So this is 603 Pine Street. This will also have two COAs. The first one's for the porch. So this is a contributing rating, rated building, Queen Anne, built around 1902. So the house are um, looking to rebuild the front porch to the original look. So this is how it looked in December of last year with the porch. As you can see, porch has some issues, has some work. large issues, um, well, really falling apart there off in the northeast corner and a little harder to see in here but it's because it's dark, but if you could see up underneath the porch ceiling on the second level is just a mess. So you so. know this has all been demoed already? Yeah. Yes, that's okay. part of it. So. Um, removal of the existing porch was approved as an emergency. So, okay. talked Sue Downs got on a conference call with Kyle and I. We talked it through. We don't normally approve demolitions. If it were a structure itself, we would have called an emergency meeting. But it was a porch, um, and she felt it could go at any moment. So we felt it was urgent because it's sitting right on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and. I don't want to be responsible for that. No, right. no. So we we did approve removal of the porch. So the original brick porch column bases and the front gable with the fish scales were retained. So here it is now. I've got it. Yeah, that's it. The gables around the corner leaning up against the other side of the house. Um, so those were retained and they'll be used on the rebuilt porch. So new porch materials will match the original. So the recommended motion is approval as submitted with the condition that all replacement materials and design details are approved by staff prior to installation. Is there anybody here representing that house? 
Okay. Do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, but, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, what does it mean, approve by staff? I'm sorry? Approved by staff. He's oh. Like, what, does that, what does that mean? Oh, that the materials and the details of the porch, whenever you decide exactly what you're using for the columns and the railing, because you know things change over time so it may not be the exact same height um, there's different requirements now so, so this material going to be wood you need to bring it in to show Kyle before you put it up so we'll have to meet, uh, construction drawing? Kyle. Kyle. yeah the construction yes. drawing to the yeah. yeah we've had some situations recently where we have approved things to be replaced as they were and then they aren't mm -hmm. <laughs> and we find out later and then it just becomes a really large problem so we just want to be certain that we lay our eyeballs on it and that our idea of replacement like it is and your idea are the same idea so shouldn't be a problem we just we just want to lay our eyeballs on it first so Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, we look at it and say, yep, that's that's going to match as best as it can in 2024, move forward, and that's it, so. Unfortunately, you had an opportunity to photograph it before it was demoed, so now you've got a good visual record to work from. Mm -hmm. was my idea to demo it, because it's going to fall down. Yeah, sure. I can good. see why. That was okay. very smart, very smart. Any other questions? Okay, so you know just to bring it to the office and um, Kyle will see you. Okay. All right. Do we have uh, a motion? Motion to approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Same. Okay. Thank you. And you're welcome to stay or you can... Well, we skip the next one. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay, so next we have windows. So, yeah, here's even an in-between picture <laughs> that was taken <laughs> just before. This was, yeah, in June. That picture was taken in June, actually. So, more recently. Again, 603 Pine Street. This project is replacement of all original wood double-hung windows with new looks like perfect, but I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, vinyl casement style windows with black exterior. So the windows on the sides and rear were removed um, without approval. So that's them in the dumpster there. This this is a month ago. So dumpster's gone, the, windows are gone. I'm sorry to interrupt you with this explanation why I did it. And I'm, uh, I feel sorry about it. There was misunderstanding on that point. The front windows are still in. My, in my head, historical was only responsible for front, facade, not all the sides. I've not a corner lot, but eventually there is no building surrounding. So I wasn't aware of that. So this is why the windows go to the top. So to, to drive by and look at it, you wouldn't know it right off. Now this, this is an older picture. This is from December. Um, just so you have an idea of how many windows are in this house. Lots and lots. Mostly double hungs. There's that one on the flat part of the bay window, the projecting part that's um, just a fixed. But most of them are double hung. Um, lots of storm windows. Lots of storm windows. <laughs> And so uh, the windows that were there appeared to be in pretty good shape and could have been easily repaired, but they're gone. So, uh, and I wasn't, I was unaware that the dumpster was gone. So just ignore this part. It's history. We can't do anything about it. They're gone. Um, if you were to drive by it today, the storm windows are still on the exterior. So you don't really notice that they're gone, but there are no windows underneath. So um, the replacement windows should match the original in size, shape, light division, operation, and materials. And vinyl windows are not recommended and generally not approved for use in the historic district. So uh, recommended motion is denial of vinyl windows with a recommendation to return with a new CO application for replacement windows that meet the historic district guidelines for material and style and retain the front wood windows, repairing as necessary. 
There is always a possibility of looking at South Bend Trade Works for correctly sized wood windows, but I will say that's a pretty slim chance. I'm just putting that in there because it was suggested to me by someone yesterday. I'm like, okay, I, I will put that in there, but I think the odds of that are very small. I moved about three or four hundred windows there last week, and I don't think any of them would have worked, honestly. Um, and the window, the proposed windows, I sent you the brochure of that. He's got, that's a sample. It's not the standard window windows, like everybody think, which is cheap. It's a, it's a pretty high quality windows that are better quality than Pella. It's, uh, you can see it's reinforced. It have all the rubbers. It's really efficient. It's a safe and it's very solid window. You can just hold this piece and you will feel you will feel the value of the product. It's not a cheap vinyl windows. It's just old vinyl, but it's not. We can call it... Uh, the wood grain is on the inside or the outside? Outside. And uh, yeah, and we can do any color we want. So you can feel the weight and you can feel how solid this product is. So it's aluminum? It's an aluminum inside it's got to, for core, structure. It's a metal core to give the vinyl structure. It's what that is. It's a vinyl window with a metal core. Good. So that's what gives it some stability. So, yeah. Looks good to me. It looks pretty bulky. So this is your frame that limits the windows. Oh, it opens like a casement? Correct. Yeah, it's hinged, right, on one side, and then yes. you pull in. They, they open like that, flip, okay. and they open inside. So more like a casement or a hopper window? In an American made window. Perfect. So, yeah. But in terms of what we see, this this dimension from here to here. That's um, just the one, one of those is actually the window mm -hmm. frame. I mean, you'll only the see part of that. And the sash. Cool. Yes. Right. yes. And, we can, and I can have it in black, I can have it in dark brown, so we can have any color to match. Whatever you guys. But my, I would like to go with the black one, but again, it's to you. My comment though is that this overall, the way it looks, is much bigger reduce. than a traditional older double hung window. It'll like reduce that. clear glass size and it's not going to be a double hung appearance unless he could find, if, if they make a um, Double hung. What do I want to say? I like an exterior grid that would make it look like it's double hung. That could. And but we don't know if that's possible. Uh, regarding you say it's going to look like uh, bulky, uh, if you look at the pictures, all my windows have uh, storm windows right now, so you really don't see any windows from outside unless you're going to come like that and look at them, or you're going to get inside the house. So the windows are not seen, you don't see them right now. You see the storm window. This is all you see. So you'd have this, but no storm window. Uh, we're not going to have storm windows. Is, in, in is there a property. screen associated with this then? Yes. Okay. But the screen is on the outside or the inside? No, it's outside. On the outside, yes. Yeah. That, that picture at that time had an outdoor air conditioning unit. Is that how would that Is work? it a historical part? I no, it's not. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying know, with that function of window, how does that work? No, it's, it's gone. Good. Is this, is this where the glass goes? Uh, correct. This is the package. And uh, like uh, we, we did the same product at 4411 Hotel, our own windows. Huh? And we put uh, triple glass huh? because we have train in the front. That's why this is so correct. Thick. Wow. For this week is super high. They are, they are so quality. Like if you, anybody want, I can come and show it for you. Mm -hmm. Any window, and you can see that they are really, this is really quality. Property. Where did you say that is, sir? Forty-four eleven Indian Suites Hotel. Forty-four. And it's on US twelve mm -hmm. west of forty-four eleven. I mean east of two twelve. Uh, is this the manufacturer sure. name? Rihal. Rihal. It's a German. It's a German company. And this is how it's hinged on the rubber like that? Uh, yeah, this is how it's open. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, they have actually other metal pieces that connect together, but in this they just don't put it. But there is a... Oh, this is just for the sample. Correct. It's just the I see. Okay. I don't know. I like the energy efficiency aspect yes. of it. 
but it seems like not not something you'd find historical. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so conflicted about this about windows. But. Are you open to other options of windows? Uh, so basically, as this gentleman speak before, uh, I already have this conversation a couple times uh, with a couple people, and uh, um, it's not my first home and not my first investment in Michigan City. We are heavily involved in Michigan City in a lot of projects, and I love to see the city growing and became more beautiful than it is already. But the thing is that economic should work. We cannot just go and throw the money because, because just because, you, you understand what I mean? So basically, we purchase this building for, let's say like this, to, to make what you guys want me, I need to pay pretty much 60% value of the building. Does it make sense? For me, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense for anyone. No, I'm talking about myself. Yeah. So basically, it's it just, uh, and again, guys, uh, I really like Michigan City. I really like a lot of people uh, that I'm dealing with. And I, nothing personal, but uh, my point is that historical district uh, shouldn't stop the progress. Let's say like that. I agree that we all need to match what was done before, and we all buy the property in historical department, and we know about that. I understand that point, but we still need to find common sense and common ground because it just, we're going to see a lot of bad buildings just sitting in the downtown because people just can't afford to, to, to do what is recommended. But I think the buildings that are falling apart is look way worse than the new building with the new site. Again, it's just my personal opinion. I'm uh, not arguing, not saying nothing. I'm just asking for common sense. And uh, you know, I want I want to invest more in Michigan City, but it should it should make sense for everybody, for community, for historical department, for renters. Because if I keep the old windows with the one glass, these tenants they're gonna pay huge bills, like huge bills. Who gonna cover it? Nobody. So it 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 should make sense for everybody. So, so this is just my point, and I really ask ask you for understanding what I'm trying to say and. Uh, have you right. used these windows in any other building you've done? Correct, yes. You at, have. At the yes, hotel, told you, 4411 for suites, they did, they did these windows. That's one of our projects. We have, we, have, we have a couple projects, and I'm going to see you very fast, very soon in the next project coming at, uh, at Franklin mm -hmm. Street, 711 Franklin. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, nothing yeah. against anybody personally, just try to bring the common sense to the table. Is this another one of those things like uh, smart siding? We, we didn't we didn't like vinyl, but then we started using smart siding, right? Yes. Uh, could this be another one of those? I mean, are we looking at just appearance? Or are we just looking at what was there? I, I agree. We we got to make some compromises. We oh, we yeah, got to yeah. we got to make some changes in the historic district in order, again, I live here, so I want to see the beautiful places even though they might use a different material because it's going to make my house look better. Mm -hmm. So we got to, we do, we, we need to make some changes and I think this might be a good time to start making some changes on these different materials because we're turning good people away that well, that's not so going to help our buildings. Let that's me just ask happen. you. So. Those windows look to me like they're pretty expensive. No, they're not. You're, you're telling me that those are less money than a Pella Architectural Series window or a... Correct. When you're going to be ready for next project or for your next house or house, I will give you the price for the windows and you will be surprised how much affordable they are and uh, quality. And uh, I'm going too far away, but there is high possibility that we're going to start producing these windows in Michigan City. It's, again, it's just, I, I go too far away, but there is a possibility we're thinking about this and we're talking about this right now. So, uh, then you're going to see more and more of these windows. And uh, like you say, it can be 
this can be a good start of cooperation. Do they make that window on the double bottom? Mm, they open inside. Yeah, but do they make another model? They, they can put a grid inside. And now they mentioned they don't get a grid. That I can you, just, you just put the, you can put the grid. Is that what you were talking about earlier? Right. Grid. Yeah, so that would make it look... Yeah, we can put the grid like this and we can put the, the, the cross grid inside. So the it would look, so it would visually look... But this house doesn't have any other mutton bars. It's no, just this would just one need one, one across yeah. the center, mm -hmm. wide enough to make it look like it was double hung. So it'll Whatever have that, that, would be. that simulated bar, inside. but the whole window is going to swing in. Inside. Yeah. You're still not going to yeah. see because it's going to be that outside. The same as we have right now, storm yeah. windows, it's going to be that. But yeah, the, it, the window by itself is going to have this stripe in the middle to repeat original window. Look. It's going to function all differently, but the look is going to be very close. And you, you had mentioned black. I, I don't see any historical pre precedence of having you black. Have, you have literally uh, three buildings away from this building. I believe this is the owner of uh, Salt uh, Unsalted. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right. No, the, the black is not a historic color for a window. No, I agree. I'm, uh, I'm not saying it's historic. I just say it's going to look really sharp. And, uh, we you generally know, we're not, we're not we want our sure. downtown to look nice. We generally do recommend dark colors, though. Yeah. Um, we can do not dark necessarily brown. black, but yeah. like a dark brown, a dark red, a dark green. Those are all typical. The right. The wood grain look just wouldn't look right, I don't think, on here at all. It, it, dark brown, probably, because the brick is the... Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. a dark brown. You want some contrast. Mm -hmm. If you were looking at aluminum material, it's often a musket brown. They call it really dark. Um, so something like that, I think the color would be yes. better. I, I wouldn't want to see the wood grain look. But. Okay. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? I'm just undecided. <laughs> I don't know how to approach this. And I know we have to do it like every time. And it's like once we approve it for one, mm -hmm. then we're going to just be opening the floodgates and everybody will wind vinyl windows and there goes our standards. So. There is the consideration of windows in the front, too, right? The win the original windows are still in the front, is that yes. correct? Yeah. So there is that. The side and the rear are gone, so obviously yeah, something has build, to go or there. Somebody can build a building on the side and nobody can, it's I'm not a corner lot. It just happened. No, right, I'm just and saying the, the very I'm front, the what, what faces Pine Street, Correct. those windows are still there. Yeah, you can't really count on that side lot being open because that could always be built on. So that's not really a yeah. consideration. Um, but the windows that are in the front, if those could be okay. Changed, so that right, could right, be here, open. how about if we do this? I make a motion that the front windows go according to our standards. The sides can be approved according to staff recommendation when they look at colors because that's the thing you're looking at now, right, is the color. You don't want a wood grain. You want you a darker want but not black, correct? Right, yeah. Okay. You we, want a darker color. The back, we don't worry about the back either, right? That's, no, no, it's on it's the alley. A, the alley is a public way. Yeah. So it's technically so still, whatever we, uh, whatever you approve, I think you should approve yeah, for all three sides. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's do the front with what the windows that are there, mm -hmm. the side and the rear, uh, again, bring it to staff, let them look at your colors, and we we'll approve according to that. Okay. It's I, time to do some upgrading yeah. on the sport. It, it's really time. I would second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then when you bring it in... Uh, yeah, I will be in touch. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank, thank you. you thank you. Do we have anything else? Mm. What? Nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, thank you very much, guys, again. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Looking forward to the next project. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one that needs mission review is 2024-075. Right one. 
for 120 West 9th Street. Um, this one they are looking, this has come before you before asking for artificial grass everywhere, front and back. You know, this is what we were looking at a few months ago. Um, that was denied by the commission. Now it is returning to asking for artificial grass only in the rear and installing a vinyl fence along the alley and southwest corner of the property. So there's the house. That's how it used to look. And there you do see it had a fence there at one time, at that time, not much of a fence, but there's a little bit of one there. And there's how it was last time you reviewed it. So. This is the one that didn't build it according to Greg's correct. plans, yes. correct? Yes, yeah. Right. So we're still dealing with the porch and the windows and all that. But this this COA is strictly for artificial grass in the backyard in and the a privacy fence. So those are the only two things we're looking at. So right we now. won't see it from the street? No. Well, hopefully not. Once that. <laughs> once the fence is there. So the guidelines do not directly address artificial grass. Artificial grass does not meet the goals of maintaining the overall look, characteristics, and feel of the historic neighborhood. Grass is proposed to be installed only behind a solid fence and not visible from the public way. The exact location of the fence is unknown, or at least it was to me. Um, a site plan indicating the location and any gates should be submitted. Rear and side yard fences should be constructed of wood. Vinyl fences and horizontal board fencing are not recommended and generally not approved by the commission. So the recommendations are approval of the installation of grass for the rear yard only where not visible from the street and the front yard should maintain a typical front yard grass lawn. Second part is the fence, approval of a fence with the conditions of submitting a site plan indicating exact location and any gates and selection of a different fence style and material. Fences from the pre-approved design and materials in the historic district guidelines can be approved by staff. If not, a new CO application will need to be submitted for review by the commission. Is there anybody here representing? Okay. So if, if, if I buy grass, did you just say we could plant grass in the front? Yes. And use this turf in the back? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm recommending. And, no, uh, that's what you're recommending? Yes. Yeah, behind the fence. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And that the fence would be approved in, when we when you get the site plan for where it's going. Yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. there was an existing fence there um, that was wood. And that we would, if, as long as we picked an approved fence, that we would be okay. That's not what I'm to believe. Yeah. I, I got a question on this too. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm my, my question is, has all the other stuff been brought up to the code that we asked for before? No, but I'm here to ask about that. To the We're not. Okay, because I was going to say, if we're going to get the stuff to what we asked for originally, then yes, we can prove all this, uh, the grass inside of the fence, the fence with the right material. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's my recommendation. What, what I'm recommending is, yes, the grass can go in the backyard behind the fence. So it's the not artificial seen. grass. Yes, that's okay. what it says right here. Real grass in the front. Real grass right. in the front, right. yes. So if, yes, behind the fence yeah. in the back. And then the fence needs to meet the guidelines. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. And it needs no to be. No vinyl, no horizontal. Correct, be yes. Yes. Because the that. picture, that was pretty, but it's like, yeah. you're killing me. <laughs> this is like I'm not the one feet. killing you. That's a whole different concept. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, that. please I'm get trying, some I'm, I'm caught in the middle of this, too. <laughs> yeah, so, so if we could get it vertical and it'll if we be, could get it wood, be vertical and it'll it'll be be good. Wood. that would be fantastic. Okay. So the vertical wood fence would need to, when you have one picked out, you need to send it to yes. Kyle yeah. for final and, approval and before you put it up. Yeah. But that's do you what. Still need, do you still need to see the site plan of it? Yes. Because we're just we're just copying what was we there. We just originally. we keep that in our file. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So that's what I'm recommending. Okay. But these are the people that vote. So okay. I'm turning Fair it over to them. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve based on Deb's recommendation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay. Now I'm also here to discuss. 
continue, hopefully continue to discuss the front porch in question. Mm -hmm. Our biggest concern is that the what was originally there hangs over your wood. On the on the right side of that? By a few inches? Yeah. Okay, I mean that can certainly be taken care of and was planned to be taken care of. Well we were never told that. There's well there were a lot of design issues with this, which is why we, yeah, why okay. it was denied. So the four by four posts just there with no trim or anything was a concern. Um, the steps not being removed initially was a concern. Uh -huh. And so now they stick out beyond. Um, what kind of porch skirt would be used? We were not knowing what that is. So we'd like to see what that is. The original drawing appeared to have more pitch to the rope. I can't verify that because I don't have that. I don't think that was indicated on the drawing. It appeared that way, but I know from working for an architect, sometimes things look different on paper than they do in real life. So I cannot verify that. But I think the biggest concerns were the porch posts, the columns, total lack of ornamentation, porch Wait, skirt, that, and that sticking out but step. you realize that that's just like rough framed? I do, but I don't know where it's headed. Okay, but you that's know? what I had submitted. I had submitted that on the other C of A that it got denied back in May. The detailing of how those columns would well, I mean, be can I, can, I, can I read what was denied? I mean, you, okay. guys didn't, you guys didn't actually deny anything I submitted. You just said you would prefer if I stuck with the original COA. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to get some clarification on that because you know as, as I read this, I mean it says um, concealed fastener standing seam metal porch roof was approved. White painted cedar columns should be trimmed similarly to porch columns in neighborhood. I think we all agreed on that. Um, uh, painted beadboard ceiling is appropriate for porches in the historic district. I'd submitted that, so you guys agree with that. Timber tech tongue and groove porch decking and stairs are appropriate. Weathered teak or coastline colors, you guys obviously agree with that. Proposed standard spindles with top and bottom rail of painted cedar. There was no disagreement with that. Uh, deck skirting to be brick recycled from the house and painted similar color as the house. There was no denial or well, you're, talk of that. you're talking about materials, but how do those materials get put together? And that's why we're saying you ha you hired a really good architect to design that porch for you, and now you're not following what he recommended. He's showing in his drawings how all those materials go together. And now you're starting to backpedal on what the architect did for you, right? We're not backpedaling. It's just a literal change. Well, you're not following it. But, so but, then but, 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 uh, is, but what we submitted was is also is also an approved deck, right? You guys didn't you guys didn't deny any of the materials we suggested. Well, we're actually, I'm not concerned about the materials as much as how those materials go together. Well, that isn't that my job to do it, so that when when when, when it's done, how does it look aesthetically it? when you put all those materials? I mean, I sent I sent pictures along with this COA of what we were going to copy from other of other houses in the area. Of how we were going to copy. That. I don't understand why you aren't you just following Greg Kills for two for two reasons. Number one, Roger, who was on this board previously, had drawn a picture for Nick, okay, and said this would get approved. Who's Nick? Nick is the owner of the property. Okay. Now, of course, there's no record of that, but Nick is. I wasn't there for it, but Nick is steadfast on it. That's why he told me to build that. Okay. Number one. Number two. Um, the, there, there's no, what was approved, why, why does it matter what was approved if what we're proposing could be approved too? I don't understand what, what I mean, we're propo what we're proposing, you guys did not actually deny. You but just, you just have preferred. no proof of what you're actually going to do. I, I, I don't understand. We never got pictures of what you're talking about. We never received pictures. Those pictures were submitted. Well, there were photos of other porches. Yes. That was submitted. Yeah, yes. and that's, and that's what I told you I was going to copy. But what we expect to see is a design for a particular porch. So, so 
So another architect. It doesn't have to be an architect. You can sketch it out on a napkin at the diner. That is fine. But we want to see it's going to have columns like this or trimmed out like that. The railing's going here. I'm going to have a rectangular lattice porch skirt. You know, whatever. I, it does not have to come from an architect. Absolutely not. We do not require that. So, but we need to see the design. We need to see how all the components go together for this particular porch. They want an elevation drawing. They want to see what it's going to look like when you're done. Deb, mm -hmm. you liked what Greg Teal oh, did. Oh, yes, absolutely. And so, we have not reviewed Roger's design. I haven't okay. seen it. So, so my point is, if the owner paid Greg Keel to, to do this design work for you, different. Then you're wasting your time and your money by not following what Greg Keel designed. In your in your opinion, in your your, opinion. it's a waste of your money because you've already paid him to do the design work, which is what we would like to see that caliber of so, drawing. So you're 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 trying to design the building. Then. No, I'm not. Yes, yes, you are. We're trying to avoid mistakes. What? What because we don't understand, we don't, we can't tell from this what your what your end game is, what your goal is. But even though it was all approved building materials, we can approve materials, but that doesn't mean that doesn't show us how they look and when it's going to be done. Okay. That's what Greg Keel's drawing does. Right. It shows yeah. us what it's going to look like when it's done. Okay. That's all you need to say. Yeah, we have never yeah. seen that. Never. Okay. Okay. So, I, 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 also, I also don't understand why it took two months to get, come to that conclusion, quite frankly. I could have been told that two months ago. I thought we did tell you that you we... Did, in that denied, it says nothing of that. It says nothing of that. You guys... You guys, me, me, you guys did not deny any of the materials that I submitted, and all it said is, is I would prefer that you use the previous drawing. That's what it says. And I've had 20 different emails with you about it. Yes, you have. And, right? And yes. not once did you ask me to just provide an elevation. I said they need to approve materials and design. Okay. So am I led to believe that if I does if I provide an elevation with approved materials, that it's going to get approved? If it meets approval of the commission, I mean that's the that's the stuff you submit with an application that makes right. a complete application, right. and then they review it and quite because, likely, because but, it, but I don't know. Me draw, driving around the town, what was it, was it originally approved by Kill? There's nothing in the area like that. Nothing. Well, we're not Nothing. replicating anything in the past. We're just doing something that's likely would look good on a house of this age. Right. We don't have a photo like that one earlier, which was super right. cool. We don't have one of those right. for this house. So as long as it looks likely to have fit in this period, then we're good with that. Okay. But we have to see the design and the materials and then be approved. Okay. Do I have a motion? I think we did already on this. Right. If he yeah. brings us that. Uh, but if you can bring that back yeah. to our next thing, or even get it into them beforehand. I will. Okay. Okay. I will. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we did approve the astroturf and the fence mm -hmm. with staff approval. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to get it to Kyle. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The many maintenance reviews. <laughs> do you want me to read through them all? Or do you want to? And you know what? Just to be clear, I never, ever saw a drawing. No. Of what That's because they was. haven't been, there wasn't okay. one submitted. Okay. There wasn't a drawing. There were photos of other porches, okay, but, but there was not, not a drawing. Okay. No. I thought so. maybe I was losing it. Okay. Sorry. So you want me to go through all the maintenance reviews? Well, is there any, maybe, is there anything in particular that you want us to know about, uh, or, because I'm not sure what, what we get from reviewing what you've already approved, yeah. so. Um, I, 
truthfully, I don't know either. Does, does it all seem pretty cut and dried and basic, or is there anything in particular you think we should know about? No, I mean, more than half of them are roofs. Um, having to do with what came out of the sky. Um, but outside of that, everything is pretty standard. Uh, new siding, a new fence, uh, fascia, gutters, um, wrapping of a window, the wrapping of a window. Um, I mean, it's all, it's, I mean, it's all standard. I mean, stuff yeah. that if you guys, you know, were to drive by the houses, chances are you're not even going to notice a difference. Okay. okay. Um, but then we, me and Deb added, um, right. I think moving forward, we're going to add COAs yes. in progress, which mm -hmm. kind of means when me and Deb or me or um, when we're driving around um, and we notice either kind of good, bad, or ugly uh, of COAs from the past um, to kind of just yeah. remind you guys, Date. you know, that okay. the things that, you know, we approve or deny or um, whatnot, um, okay. that they are moving um, forward in the progress. And that's you know, those and last three. That so, and I yes. added some photos on those. Okay. So 906, 908 Wabash. This is how it looked when the project started back in mm -hmm. whenever you had three feet of snow and it was below zero. Mm -hmm. So, and this is how it's looking today. So if you see, it had no porch railing at the right. time. Right. And that lattice there in the front and not much in the way of a handrail. So they've now constructed all of this. Mm -hmm. um, they're working on the second floor porch and it really... Okay. So yeah. it's pretty good, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's coming along. There's They've got new lattice on there. Um, mm -hmm. We got a friendly she contractor that wanted his picture in here, so <laughs> I obliged him and took a picture. Um, and then, yeah, there's a close-up. Nice. So we wanted you to see how that was mm -hmm. coming together. The windows, I think they have one more window to maybe. install, maybe, on the windows. I don't know if you can really see those very well, but the two there on the angled portion of the bay window, have been repaired and then all the ones in the front yeah well there's one out in the center obviously yes mm -hmm. and those oh that attic window that was a mess that palladian window up there and they pretty much built that from scratch oh, and put that nice. in there so all the windows facing the front except for two that are recessed on the south side are all restored wood windows so cool oh, that's great i think Very the nice. owner's done a good job of retaining a lot of the original material and character so when did you see that one um yeah I, I think it's important for us to see what works yeah right you know as much as we see a lot of stuff so. that's not working right doesn't work and doesn't look good yeah so you can see that you know we started here and it, it wasn't a terrible house but it needed some love definitely you know and you see it now and it's really mm -hmm come together quite a bit mm -hmm. so and just when did you you need to see the good sometimes <laughs> along sure. with all that yeah. so um, this one's not quite yeah. as good I talked with the contractor today did you um, and yeah so I mean we're not gonna we, you, with these we're not voting but no. you guys, guys you, know what's you guys could provide some input because I talked with the contractor today about it and I said um, there's some design changes that we would probably that staff as well as maybe the commission would like to add um, so I have I printed off a picture that had been sent to me um, just to kind of I mean I guess you have the exact same photo it's yes. just in black and white but it's so it might be a little easier so that's kind of so what that's what like they have this is what we're looking at now and there's just a lot of issues with this porch I mean the spacing of the balusters isn't even, and if you see the center section on the second floor to the right side, there isn't even a baluster for yeah. six to eight inches or so. The blocking is strange on it. This, 
and you see the handrail stops before the end of the stairs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues, but they hadn't called for inspection. Correct. correct? Was, uh, well, what I think there was a check? framing inspection. This is uh, 416 East 9th Street. Yeah. Okay. I believe there was a framing. Well, I think at least during the phone call, my understanding was he had called in for a framing inspection, but because of the holiday, he didn't know if he was put on the schedule. Okay. Um, so he didn't know if anyone ever inspected it, so I think he just proceeded. Just kept going. But now that the project was red tagged and stopped, now we're kind of going backwards to now. I think there will be a framing inspection, um, kind of based on I mean, whatever decision. Well, I guess it's not really a decision, whatever recommendation in terms of if there was any design elements that you guys would like. Um, to add kind of with the staff's mm -hmm. um, recommendation um, before he, depending on what he has to do um, for inspections. So in this case, if you look, it's hard to see because this is quite a ways away, but the original railing, the balusters in it are square. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, everybody is now using colonial spindles. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah. I don't know that that's necessary or appropriate for this particular house. It has very straight lines. I just feel like they, when you guys approved this, you said that they needed to come to staff mm -hmm. for final approval of materials on the porch, and that didn't happen. So, I mean, in this so. case, I mean, in this case, kind of like how this gentleman said, we were provided a list of materials but we didn't ever have a full design. Right. So what we approved was materials without a full design, and this, this may have happens. been a case of what happens when we yeah when we don't know without yeah. we really need drawing. materials and a design. Yeah. You know, and what 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 we really need is you know more design professionals to help these people. That would be at, great. At, you know, yes. At, at reasonable cost, but. I, I just don't know where else we can get more people like Greg Keel to help us in our town with all of these projects. Yeah. Because everybody comes to us and say, oh, this, I'm going to use all the, like this guy, I want to give you all these materials, but that doesn't tell us. Did they anything. go together? What does it look yeah. like when it's going to be done? Mm -hmm. And it, you know, and just doing sketches and like that, that first petition where they just drew those crude drawings of that lean to mm -hmm. on the back of the house, that doesn't really tell us anything about what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So I, it, that's, that's another big issue that we have that I wish we could figure out how to would, get more design professionals to work would with Would PNC as students maybe that would work with people? Maybe. Could we? You know? Maybe. Like from St. Andrews University or something? Yeah, or something if they would. Notre Dame? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could get something together, Kyle, and no. ask him. Oh, Terry Maurer, the architect working with her. He did a really good job. Yes, he did. It's not Greg Keel, but um, Brendan Crumlish from South Bend came and did that one, and he did an amazing job. So, and he's Actually, he's working on another one here in town that hasn't come in front of us yet. He's actually doing that one pro bono, so because oh. it's for an older woman that he felt couldn't maybe afford his services. So there are people out there. Um, we just need to be able to let them know where there's right. some resources, right. you right. know. So well, I'm not sure it goes back to us getting the word out about the responsibility of owning in a historic district. Yeah. yeah. The, what we expect not, that yeah. it's not easy yeah <laughs> that exactly. well and that's why we've approached real estate agents right. asking them to tell people because i wonder if we need to add it to our our list of requirements that they need to have architectural drawings uh, i mean I drawings don't wanna, are on the list the aren't drawings they? are on the list i mean i don't know if architect Textual drawings. I mean, I don't want to put a burden. Right. On nothing, right. I mean, burden on people, but at the same time, I mean, we need to have some type yeah. of right drawings. You know that yeah, they need all something. of us can understand. Yeah. I mean, even a simple porch has a lot of detail. It does. You've got to look at the big picture. Is the proportion scale of everything correct? 
but then you've got to go down to all the little details, the column details, and the mm -hmm. spindles, and the handrails. <laughs> all that stuff has to be thought out. You right. can't just throw somebody in there and say, yeah. do it. Yeah, and we can't really approve it and say, oh, replace it, because who knows? They may use the right materials, but put them together yeah. incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. So we really need the design and the materials, and they need to be submitted with the application. Mm -hmm. so. And then, to add another layer, you've got to have a contractor who's committed to following <laughs> yes. what's on the drawing. Yes, yes, and yes. And understanding it. Yes. And talking with the architect and understanding how mm -hmm. these things are all going to work when they... You yeah, know, because it's, it's going to be a learning experience for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's a learning experience yeah. for the owner. It's a for the contractor. You know, all for everybody that, involved. That is yeah. true. Yeah. But I think once, if we could just, if we could get more aggressive about requiring that, then people will learn, and right. then hopefully we'll start building a better base of contractors in town that do understand. Right. And they'd be our go-to guys. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. When they're approached, they'll mm -hmm. tell the owner, oh, you're going to have to do this, do this. and this. Yes. And I know how to do it. And yeah. I know how to walk mm -hmm. you through. Right. Yeah, it would be a great selling point for yeah. them, you know, yeah. so. Because at the end of the day, if it's not done right, it doesn't help anybody. No. It doesn't help the city. It doesn't help because it's not going to help the appearance of the neighborhood. It's not going to help the value of the property. And no, and if they have to tear it down and redo it, the cost is crazy yeah. high. So let's just do it right from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. So now, the, could we find financial help somehow for some of these people too? I don't know. That's another thing to explore. I mean, certainly, the t the uh, state tax credit for residential properties that's that's an incentive. Yeah. You do have to put the money out, and right. then you get the tax credit yeah, in the so future. Yeah, suppose there is commercial tax credits as right. well, but you got to make sure to follow the rules. Yeah, yes. Horizon um, Bank did have a lady that did help people. Right, there's some programs yeah. through Horizon Bank which are good, and there's there are various loans that come out, or not loans, but grants from yeah. time to time, different things. Um, mm -hmm. And if we ever <laughs> get our CLG yeah. designation done, there would be some additional funding that way. Uh, Subaru Indiana Automotive puts out a grant to Indiana-owned properties between five and fifteen thousand dollar grants. Those are not residential. That that would be like a not-for-profit. It would be a government or educational-owned. But you know we have some of those buildings yes, in yeah. historic districts. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the tax credit, state tax credit for residential, federal tax credit for commercial. That's out there. All you got to do is follow the rules. And on a residential, that even covers things you do inside the building. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the lady that was the um, chair of the Laporte Historic Preservation Commission actually had her got a twenty percent tax credit on her new kitchen. Oh, inside her house. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. In a historic house. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's. Good. And there was nothing unusual it was a very I mean it's a nice kitchen but it wasn't anything like she wasn't trying to recreate anything <laughs> special or anything but she got that I mean there's paperwork and you got to follow the rules but it's worth it if you get 20% yeah. back yeah. so those are those are things we need to let people know about and they did have a workshop in Laporte about those tax credits Kurt Garner came and gave that this spring I think that would be phenomenal if we would do that here so that people, if we can get the word out to right. get people there, um, that would be great because people need to know about that. That's out there. And, it ha and those properties have to be either on the, I believe, on, on, the, on the National Register. All right. So either in the district mm -hmm. or individually listed. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So could yeah. we ask him and maybe advertise it? for months before mm -hmm. it happens? Yes, mm -hmm. we should do that. Do you want to try and do that this fall oh, sometime? Wonderful. I would think if you can get a date for him. Okay. And then we'll... Um, I can talk to him. Secure a spot. How far out do you want start to think? Well, September? I think securing the spot seems to be more of our challenge than getting, <laughs> than getting someone. Yeah. So. Yeah. You so. Although. The fire station works. The fire on. station it's said to me, Thank you for keeping keeping the place so clean. Thank you for putting everything away. And if you ever need to come back, okay. Well, there so you that go. That might be a, a 
a good thing. So and maybe September, October, somewhere in there, do you think? Yeah. What is everyone? Are they out? Yeah, before the weather hits back. Yeah. I don't. September, yeah. October. I think, September, October. I think October. one of those two. Yeah. Let me talk to him. Is it possible we could ask Drew about this, Drew White, but maybe we have it, um, we could do it here and then they could record it. We could have it as a recorded document that people could go back and watch. If they can't put a link that. on the website then to that, that yeah, people could. Would be would, right now, the information would all be. That would be really cool right if we hand. could do that. But if we had a lot of people, we'd never fit in this room. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, but they, 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 you record in other places, right? In other yeah, facilities. city council. City council. Yeah. Or the EOC. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's That's see if we can do that. Okay. That's a great idea. That's yeah. good. I'll show you one more while we're still on it, just in case. You know, we've talked about repointing, mm -hmm. and we always say that we want the mortar to match the existing in color, composition with mm -hmm. all of that, mm -hmm. and we'll show you why. So, back to 603 Pine Street. Yeah. This is how it looks now. And you would swear those are different bricks, and they're not. It's just that it in no way matches the mortar that was there before. So you can see how it looked all the same previously. Mm -hmm. And here we are now. You can mm -hmm. see the front was redone, the side was not. I've got a few close-ups. There's even closer. Yeah, yeah. I, that was the first thing I noticed when I drove by. Yeah, it's me like, too. It's bright now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is so bad. I thought maybe they power washed it, honestly. And no, if you look at the corner, those bricks are the same color going around the corner. Mm -hmm. Just that astonishing. Awful. And that the foundation had a very small, modified grapevine joint, which. Mm -hmm should be a nice round actually I've seen people put it on like with a cake decorating bag and so it's just like putting a border on a cake this is just flat it's wide yeah it's it very out. white like um, Larry said it's quite noticeable yes quite noticeable and then when Kyle and I were there and were able to see it right up close there's places where you can see that they used power tools to remove the old mortar and cut into the brick so there's cut marks in the brick that's just going to let moisture in so our thinking on this is going forward because we've been fighting this battle for I don't know how long mm. these mortar jobs just don't turn out like we're expecting them even though we lay out the parameters that we're going to ask for a sample beforehand they do okay. a small mock-up for us oh that's a good idea with the, with the correct color yeah and that way we can see that their idea of matching in ours is the same idea yeah, because well, this was done by an amateur oh absolutely i could have probably done that good that's <laughs> <laughs> good so just just so you know we're aware and that's what we're thinking about doing so in our spare time <laughs> okay okay anything else to talk about? Yeah, public. Yeah, perhaps let's do public comment. Oh. Hey, <laughs> showtime. Hey, Scott Mellinger, I'm kind of replaced. I can see how complicated this gets really quickly, and I can care. I can see how much you all care. Um, we have a facade grant program, but I think it's only for commercial properties. I think you're right. No, you are right. That's the problem. We talk to city council, have somebody sponsor, perhaps extending that to the historic district. Uh, maybe we could help people with these kind of inheritance and your idea of recording the presentation by the person we talked to to be an online resource is a fantastic idea. One of the notes I made is be a resource for people. There's mm -hmm. things we want. It's hard to make an approved list of the type of spindles for Queen Anne House and, and all this, but the more information you can give people, the better start there will be anyway, mm -hmm. a better starting point. Um, and the biggest thing, the window conversations are really important. Windows are a huge part of the house, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see the struggle. Do we care more about the materials or the appearance? Technology changes over time. We wouldn't make people in the historic district maintain a coal-fired boiler because that's how it was built. Um, when it comes to the vinyl windows, there's clearly a distinction between these high-quality German windows yeah. and cheap vinyl windows. So clearly, 
it's important to keep up with technology. Technology changes. Windows is a major thing. Germany is filled with 200-year-old houses. They update the windows with these windows. So I think we need to be cognizant of that as well. There has to be a good balance, not just, well, you need to use wood windows, um, in my opinion. You know, energy efficiency, quietness, and keeping up with the times. You know, you wouldn't make them use uh, old appliances from the 30s in their kitchen. You know, right? We have to also keep, if you want these, people are making big investments. Our housing stock is old. These are old buildings that essentially need to be gutted at this time. New electrical systems, new plumbing systems, new windows, new roofs. These are major <coughs> investments. Um, and there should be some flexibility to go with modern materials of an appropriate caliber. I think that's where the distinction could be made. You can't just put in builder grade vinyl windows, but if you have an appropriate architectural quality window, that's something I think should be, frankly, about. Um, that's all. I can see it gets hard and you're, you, you guys really care. Um, but there has to be a balance between economic reality and, and going forward in the future as well. Even the, the guy with, you wanted to keep a single pane wooden windows. I understand the goal, but is that really the best outcome for the building and the future tenants? Food for thought. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we have anything else to come before? I don't think so. I don't think so for this one. You better not get sick. Oh, I, do. <laughs> I won't get sick. You, you don't have time. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No, I mean, there's probably there's going to be some stuff coming for next month, but this is everything for this month. Okay. Well, thank you. This is this is enough. Yeah, you're telling me. I bet. I Aren't bet. you glad you saved the meeting for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thought you were getting out of one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm um, sorry, but try hard to love you too much, much to let you off. <laughs> With just a free vacation and nothing else. So. <laughs> All right. Anybody have anything else? Motion to dismiss. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Sorry,